Hi, I'm Stevie Fernandez. And I'm Trish Whitmer. Thanks for starting 2014 by joining us for this week's Explore Tulsa. You know, Trish, I always feel that it's a good idea to look back into history to make the best steps towards looking into the future. Good idea, Stevie. And with that in mind, we should check in with John Erling for a trip down memory lane with one of his interviews from Voices of Oklahoma. Voices of Oklahoma is such a great educational site with so much to learn about the people that made Tulsa history and all of Oklahoma. Today, John tells us about the time he spent with one of the founders of the Williams Company, John Williams. John Williams was a major figure in this town. He could have a brusque way about him. He was a natural born leader. And so when I came there, I was, I was fearful of it. I really was. And, but when I got into it and I started the interview, I mean, he couldn't have been nicer and sweeter to me. But a lot of people don't know he had a great World War II uh, military record. And he was attached to the 5th Battalion, the Marines. And he uh, landed on Iwo Jima, February of 1945. It was just very, very, very cold. And when they made that landing, they were being fired upon by the Japanese. And he talks about what that was like. The first couple of nights there, it was sort of Russian roulette as they went up and down the beach landing mortars as to whether you were going to get hit or not. It turned out it wasn't my turn, but I must say there were a lot of people being killed and wounded. And near you, too, I would imagine. Oh, right, right closer than you and I are. Yes, I did see the flag go up on Mount Surabachi. We were the closest troops to the mountain. So was there cheering? Yes, absolutely. There was cheering. Now let me remind you that John Williams was only 31 years old when he co-founded the Williams Companies and he led the way to purchase the Great Lakes Pipeline Company. He laid the foundation for the Williams Companies with that transaction. It's a great story and he tells it of course in VoicesOfOklahoma.com. Houston was going to be their headquarters but they chose Tulsa and then uh, through urban renewal downtown and through land that they acquired they then closed off Boston. That effort was led by our former mayor, Bob LaFortune. And uh, then John tells how the building that they built came to be a 50-story building. It's a great story. Our original plan was to build two buildings, one on each side of Boston Avenue, about second of where the present building is located, but let Boston Avenue continue through there. And we hired Minuto Yamasaki as our architect. And as you know, he was the one that did the World Trade Center. He was going along with this idea of the two buildings. And like all architects, they prepare a model. That's really something you put on the table and look at and move things around. That's when I got the, looking there with these two buildings with Boston Avenue run through there. I said, why do we want two buildings? I picked up one of the building and put it in the middle of Boston Avenue and put the other one on top of it. Yama's eyes lit up and he said, well, Mr. Williams, if you put those together, you get the same number of usable square feet with 52 stories. And I say, that's even better. So in an instant, uh, the idea for Oklahoma's tallest buildings uh, actually took shape and uh, now known as the Bank of Oklahoma Tower. But uh, John told me so many, many great stories and here's a story I really want you to hear. It's a really cute story how John leaves his office and he's actually stopped for jaywalking. I was walking from our building, going over to the Tulsa Club, walking across the green. I got on the west side of Boston, the southwest corner of 3rd and Boston. There was a policeman there. And he stopped me. He said, you were jaywalking. I said, well, sir, I guess I was. I did walk across the light, but I looked all three ways. There were no cars anywhere. He said, well, the law says you can't walk against a red light. You were jaywalking. Show me your license. I said, I'm not going to show you my license. I wasn't driving. I was walking. He said, now, don't give me any more of your lip, bud. Show me the license. I'll cuff you. So I said, yes, sir. I pulled out my license, showed it to him. He took it in his hand and he looked at the license and he looked up at me and then he looked over my shoulder at the building and looked at the license, looked at me, looked over my shoulder. He said, is that your building? <laughs> I said, yes, sir. He said, don't do it again. <laughs> One thing interesting about John Williams 
is he had the opportunity to live in Cuba at a very young age because his father worked there. And so uh, John was educated in the schools there and he spoke fluent Spanish. Para mí ha sido un gran placer tener esta oportunidad de pasar esas dos horas hablando con todas mis experiencias en, en, en mi vida de la, los últimos 91 años. Vamos a ver qué pasa el próximo año. That's great. And uh, can you tell me what that meant? It's been a great pleasure for me to spend these last two hours with you and telling about my past experiences. And I hope that I have a few years left. So I, I'm happy to tell you that John went back to Cuba and he looked up his old playmates and had a wonderful time going back there. He also, in the interview uh, that I did with him, he talks about being in jail. Can you imagine John Williams in jail? Uh, but he's got a great story about that. And then he talks about the Performing Arts Center when he led the drive for the funds for the Performing Arts Center. This is a great man. I got to talk to him face to face. And uh, I enjoyed it very, very much, like I have enjoyed talking to many, many uh, Tulsans and Oklahomans here on Voices of Oklahoma.